I should uh, like to start by welcoming our witness and those who have joined us at the QE2 Conference Centre today, as well as those who may be watching the hearing either on television or through the internet. And we've also heard from many other witnesses and have amassed a very considerable body of documentary evidence. Mr Blair, the very powerful speech you made to the House of Commons on the 18th of March 2003. The single most important thing to me about September the 11th, as I've often said, is that 3,000 people died, but if they could have killed 300,000, they would have. And the single most difficult thing we have to face today, and I think we face it still, I think this is why I personally take a very hardline view on Iran, is the risk of this new type of terrorism and extremism based on an ideological perversion, frankly, of the faith of Islam, combining with technology that allows them to kill people on a large scale. Now to the involvement of your cabinet in these decisions. The policy was totally clear. The policy was, we are going to deal with this issue. Our preference is to deal with it through the United Nations, but not dealing with it is not an option. Do you think it was clear, do you think it was understood within the cabinet that we actually had military preparations underway? Yes, of course. And that they were taking collective responsibility for this policy? Uh, of course they were taking collective responsibility for the policy because it was being outlined the entire time and they knew that you can't simply decide But they didn't know the military preparations. They didn't know the, the military preparations. I, I would have been astonished if they, did, if they didn't because there was discussion of that. <laughs> I'll ask Sir Roderick to pick up the questions now, Rod. Right. 